Last time we considered the question of when it even makes sense to model decision making in terms of expected utility maximization. And based on the preference axioms we determined that for a single decision maker, utility maximization is often very reasonable. And that's great for us because maximization problems are the sort of thing that computer scientists solve all the time. So we can use simple algorithms to make good predictions. But in game theory, we have multiple interacting decision makers, which can really throw a wrench into the works. First of all, when the players have different preferences, it's not even clear what it means to pick the best outcome. And second, we know from examples like the prisoner's dilemma that strategic interactions can result in an outcome that's suboptimal according to everyone's preferences. And so this leads us to the topics for our next few videos. First, in this video, we need to figure out what it means to aggregate the preferences of multiple decision makers. And then in our next few videos, we'll need to think about how we can make predictions about strategic behavior. Last time we described decisions in terms of outcomes and lotteries but we know we can translate between that view and the actions and utilities of a payoff matrix. In a prisoner's dilemma, the outcomes correspond to the cells of the payoff matrix, and a lottery could result from one of the players randomizing their action. And so, using the utilities in the payoff matrix, we can express each player's preferences over the different outcomes and possible lotteries. For player 1, their most preferred outcome is DC, which gets them a utility of 3, and that's followed by the outcomes that get utilities of 2, 1, and 0. And to compare lotteries against each other or against these outcomes, we just need to compute an expected utility. This lottery L1 gives a 50-50 chance of the outcome DC or DD, and so it corresponds to player 1 picking the action D, and player 2 following a strategy that randomizes 50-50 between the actions. And to figure out player 1's expected utility, we just need to add up the probability of each outcome times player 1's utility in that outcome. Since this lottery has two outcomes with a 0.5 chance, we'll add up 0.5 times player 1's utility in each of those circumstances. So here, player 1 gets a utility of 3, and here they get a utility of 1. And so in expectation, this lottery gets player 1 a utility of 2, making them indifferent between the lottery and the outcome CC, which also gets them a utility of 2. For player 2, we can do the same calculation, adding up 0.5 times their utility here, plus 0.5 times their utility here. And so with an expected utility of a half, this lottery is worse for player 2 than the both defect outcome, but it's at least better than the case where they get 0. But since our two players have a different preference ordering over the outcomes, and therefore also over many lotteries involving those outcomes, it's not necessarily obvious what it means for one outcome to be better than another. If we want to compare outcomes in a game in terms of how good they are for the players overall, we need some way of combining the preferences, or better yet, the utilities, of the different players. And perhaps the most obvious way to approach this is by just adding up the utilities in a given cell. And then we would consider outcomes that have a higher total utility better for the players overall. This idea of maximizing the sum of utilities is known as a utilitarian criterion, and it gives us a ranking over the outcomes and lotteries in this game. For example, if we evaluate the outcome CC, then we will add up the utilities for a total of 4, 
and we would consider that a better outcome than one where the sum of utilities is 3. And this gives us a ranking over the outcomes according to the utilitarian criterion. And for lotteries that randomize over the outcomes, we can also add up the expected utilities for the players. And so for L1, we would add up these individual expectations for a total of 2.5, which would order it here according to our criterion. But the idea of maximizing total utility has obvious flaws that philosophers have long argued over. And so maybe a better approach to comparing outcomes would be to instead try to maximize the utility of the player who is worst off. Which then leads us to the egalitarian criterion, where we will rank the outcomes by which one has the higher utility for the player who does the worst in that outcome. In the outcome where both cooperate, the minimum payoff is 2 while for the other outcomes we have a minimum payoff of 1 or 0. And so again we have a way of ranking the outcomes, but we've gotten a different result than under the utilitarian criterion, which preferred these off-diagonal outcomes with a total utility of 3, whereas the egalitarian criterion doesn't like them since they have a smaller minimum utility. Just like before, we can also evaluate lotteries according to this criterion, where for L1, the minimum over the players of the utilities is 0.5. So this also places the lotteries within our outcome rankings. So just by looking at these two criteria, we've established that there's not necessarily a clear ranking over the outcomes. And I'm sure that you could also come up with other criteria that might, under some circumstances, make more sense than either of these. But worse still, each of these criteria is making a fundamental and potentially flawed assumption about comparing utilities between players. And we can illustrate the problem by a variation on our Prisoner's Dilemma payoff matrix. In this payoff matrix, I've added 5 to all of player 1's payoffs. But I actually haven't changed anything about player 1's preferences. The ordering over the outcomes when I've added 5 to all of the utilities is exactly the same. And that's even true when we insert lotteries into the ordering, because adding the same constant to every outcome in the lottery just adds that same constant to the expected utility calculation, and so the utility of the lottery has also been increased by 5, and it falls in exactly the same place in the preference ordering. For player 2, I've multiplied all of the utilities by 100, but if we look back at their preference ordering and compare with these new utilities, they still have exactly the same preferences over the outcomes, and likewise, for any lottery, we've multiplied all of those utilities by 100, and so we will have multiplied all the terms in the expected utility calculation by 100, and so the lottery will fall in exactly the same place in the preference ordering as it did before. So adding 5 to all of player 1's payoffs didn't change their preferences, and multiplying player 2's payoffs by 100 didn't change their preferences. So this payoff matrix describes exactly the same game as our basic prisoner's dilemma. And yet, if we evaluated our utilitarian and egalitarian criteria on this payoff matrix, we might get a very different result. In this new payoff matrix, we know that player 1's utility for the lottery is just their old utility plus 5, and player 2's utility is just their old utility times 100. But now if we reevaluate our sum of utilities criterion, we'll be adding the player 1 and player 2 payoffs that have been modified in different ways.
And so we will need to re-rank all of the outcomes according to each criterion for game two. These two utilities were backwards. Now they actually correspond to adding five to the original payoffs. When we rank according to the sum of utilities, the best outcome is this one with a total of 305, then CC with a total of 207, 106, and 8. For the lottery, the total payoff is the sum of the two expected payoffs, placing it in this position. So these new utilities, even though they express exactly the same preferences, have completely changed our ordering of the outcomes of the game. And we'll see that we've also messed up the egalitarian ordering. The minimum payoff for CC is 7, which is equal to the minimum expected payoff among the two players for the lottery. So the lottery now appears in a tie at the top of our ordering. So the overall message here is that if we're going to use some criterion for ranking outcomes that involves any sort of comparison between different players' utilities, we need to be very careful and have a very good reason why we think it's okay to do that. Maybe in the original formulation of The Prisoner's Dilemma, we think that we have captured the incentives well enough that it's okay to add up or take the minimum over the utilities of the different players. But it's important to remember that our justification of utility maximization based on preferences doesn't single out this prisoner's dilemma as being any more valid than this one. So, because any individual player's utilities can be scaled in various ways that mean the same thing in terms of their preferences, we need to be very cautious about any reasoning that depends on the specific scale that we've chosen for the utilities. So, if we're concerned about these sorts of comparisons that aggregate different players' utilities, what options are we left with? Well, if we want to avoid any sort of aggregation of different players' utilities, our only real option is to make comparisons that only look within the preferences of one player at a time. And that leads us to the criterion of Pareto efficiency. If we're comparing two outcomes by the Pareto criterion, we can only say that one is better than the other if it is at least as good for everyone. That is, the better outcome cannot lower anyone's utility. Or another way to think of that, no one can object to picking that outcome because it's worse for them. And to say that the outcome is actually better, there needs to be at least one player for whom it is a strict improvement. So somebody has to actively want that outcome because it gives them a higher utility. So what sorts of comparisons does this let us make? Well, we can say that the outcome where both cooperate is better by the Pareto criterion than the outcome where they both defect because both players are better off. But if we compare to either of the outcomes where one player cooperated and the other defected, there's one player whose utility has gotten worse and one player whose utility has gotten better. And so we cannot make a Pareto comparison between them because the players would disagree about the ranking of these outcomes. If we add the lottery L1 to our comparison, then, relative to the both cooperate outcome, player one is exactly as well off, and player two is worse off. So we can say that both cooperate is Pareto dominant over the lottery. But if we compare the lottery to both defect, now the players are going to disagree. Player one prefers the lottery 
getting them a payoff of two, but player two would prefer to get a payoff of one from both defect. So when we use the Pareto efficiency criterion, sometimes we can make a definitive comparison, but it doesn't give us a total ordering because some things just aren't comparable. And so we're left with another unsatisfactory criterion, meaning that if we want to aggregate preferences of multiple players in a game, there are many different possible criteria, all of which have benefits and drawbacks. And so which one we should choose is not in general obvious and will depend on what we're trying to use that comparison for. And so whenever we're making one of these comparisons that requires us to choose some criterion, we should keep in mind their benefits and drawbacks and be prepared to justify the approach we've chosen to use.